Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Smartphones and Cell Phones blog. I'm going to show uh, some text input methods on the Sprint HTC Evo 4G. But to start off with, you know, one of the things I'm looking at as I make some purchase decisions is uh, is even looking at the Nexus One versus the Evo 4G. I use the Nexus One right now on T-Mobile, but I also have the Nokia N900 and um, some other devices on T-Mobile, and I'm thinking about maybe dropping my Nexus One and just sticking with the Evo 4G for my Android device. And one of the things that shocked me, not shocked me, but I guess when I held them together is, boy, there's a huge size difference here. And as you can see side by side, the display is, is quite significantly different. And it may not be readily apparent on the camera, but the fonts on the Evo 4G are, are clearer. It's a little bit fuzzy, um, maybe not fuzzy, but it's just not as clear and sharp on the uh, the Nexus One. Although the Nexus One, as you can see on this home screen view, does have the uh, Froyo 2.2 OS running on it, so it is a bit different, but there's a, quite a significant size difference between these two devices, both in the width, and uh, thickness is about the same, but width and the screen, screen size, and uh, I like the button layout, which is interesting here. On the Evo 4G, there's a home, menu, back, and then search. On the Nexus One, it's back, menu, home, and search. I kind of like the home over on the, uh, the far left there, actually, but uh, that's just a quick little look at things I'm considering between those two devices. Now I get this question asked quite a bit, so I wanted to go ahead and use the Evo 4G as a platform to show this. Um, I get asked quite a bit about the text input options. So let's go ahead and go to one of my screens. I'll go to the documents to go, Word, and I'll create a new file to kind of show you. This is documents to go, which is a fantastic application on Android. It actually has some functionality in there that's almost as powerful as a desktop application as far as um, things you can, uh, tracking changes and comments and a bunch of different features in there. So here is the uh, the default HTC, so this is a HTC Sense device, this is the HTC keyboard that's loaded on there. And with this larger screen it's actually very easy to type on and uh, you can set up, and I'll show you the settings in a minute for what you can uh, control there. But since this uh, device has no trackball or anything else. You can see at the bottom there's actually arrow keys to navigate around the screen and then there's a back and a um, return. You can toggle the keyboard off and on if you press and hold. You can select toggle. So this is the default keyboard and there's uh, you know people for and against it. Um, I personally really like it because entering things like all those if you can see in gray above all the primary characters are characters for um, the alternate characters and all you simply do is press and hold and they'll pop up and when you also you can see when I do that if I press and hold on some keys like the numbers multiple character options appear and I could select one of those as well if I didn't want that one okay and then there's shift and then shift lock as you can see it underlines the shift key there uh, there's the ability to tap that and then as you can see you can speak so you can have vo uh, voice to text. You tap the number key. There's a couple numbers. There's uh, and you can see there's one out of two. Whoops. Tap the number key. One out of two. You go to the next page. There's some emoticons even on the keyboard, as you can see there. Um, on the lower lower two rows, you go back to A B C. Uh, shift, as you can see, does the capital. And then if we were to pop into landscape. It'll switch and have the same keyboard, but even in a wider format. Over here, we now have the uh, navigational keys over on the right side. So this is a, actually a quite a functional keyboard. And as you can see, as I type, it does predictive text. If I like the word, just hit the space bar, it enters it, and then adds a space to it. Um, I actually like this keyboard quite a bit, and I, when I'm not on video, I can be pretty fast with it. Okay, so that's one option. Now, if I go ahead and tap and hold, select input method. Now, one, I, one thing I'm also testing out, which I loaded up here, is swipe. Let's see if it can switch it into swipe mode. There we go. So this is swipe on the... Uh, HTC Evo 4G. Currently, it's in uh, it's in beta. I was able to get a hold of the beta. Uh, they sent me the beta to test out. I do have it loaded on. I had it loaded on the HD2 when I had that. 
Um, I've tried it on the Nexus One. It's actually a very functional keyboard that is uh, that you enter text by swiping across the keyboard. Let me just go ahead down a couple more. Okay, so now if I wanted to enter, say, test, I would go swipe my finger across. This is a... And it'll automatically add the space in there if you just start doing another word of swipe. Pretty accurate, and once you get used to sliding across, it's, it's quite, uh, quite good to use that way. You can tap on a symbol access more um, options as well. You can actually see there's options here and there's a nice help file. Swipe is pretty involved and I do recommend that you go through the tutorial or view the options because it's, it can be uh, quite overwhelming at first until you get used to it and then, uh, then it actually really flies. Um, if we tap over here on this you can see there's the predictive right and it will predict um, a bunch of different words. You can see what all the different ones that they offer are and it also works in uh, landscape mode just bigger rearrange just a little bit there are no arrow keys for uh, for navigational things like there are on the default keyboard but it is an option now I'm gonna go ahead and pop back to let's go to the settings and I'll show you some of the keyboard options that we have here as you can see swipe is still in beta and for some reason it is not hiding there so language and keyboard so there's some All right. so in the language and keyboard here we can see we can uh, we have swipe selected touch input and then you can select right here there's keyboard types QWERTY phone keypad I'll kind of show you that there's text input there's tutorial if we tap on text input, you can see there's a bunch of different options here. In the QWERTY mode, we've got prediction, spell correction, I currently have turned off. I can tap that and turn it on. We've got the phone, keypad, and compact QWERTY options as well. Spell correction, we've got feedback, which gives you a little and there's a calibration tool, which gives you a better touch experience based upon how you touch your keyboard. And let's see, go back. Swipe settings here. We see there's auto spacing, auto capitalization, word prediction, the tip indicator, which is that little thing over on the left, vibrate on key pressed, input method, display trace, which is that uh, arrow or the blue line that follows you as you're tracing, speed versus accuracy. You can set that setting as you want. Okay. So let's go back into Word. Changing my input method back. I'll get the input method changed back here in a sec. I also want to show you a swipe that you can just use it as a regular keyboard as well. You can just tap on, on letters. You can actually tap and hold, which does the same thing as it does in the um, in the Android key, or the uh, HTC keyboard where it will give you the alternate key tap and hold on it. See that? So it works both ways, either swiping across and then it gives you a bunch of different options like that. Okay? So that's swipe. Okay, so now I want to change input methods. We go down here, we tap and hold on a text field. I switch back to touch input and if I tap on here you can see now I've entered the phone keypad uh, version just to kind of show you how you can use that as well. I personally don't use this very often, but you see so you have the option for XT9 or toggle that to the ABC. Um, I personally don't like this keyboard. I've moved to a QWERTY keyboard for a reason and not to go back to the phone keypad. Let's just jump back, go to our settings, language and keyboard, touch input settings, and let's change that's phone keypad. Let's try the compact QWERTY. Okay. And we'll jump back into Twitter here and that's the compact QWERTY. Now this one is uh, something I, I may may end up using at times. As you can see it predicts quite well because it only has two to choose from um, and the keyboard has larger targets than a QWERTY keyboard and things like that. Again you can toggle between ABC and uh, 
XT9, which is the predictive. See right there, it didn't get that right. And that's not right. See, ZDNet doesn't come up right. Let's try XT9 and see if that works. I missed the first letter. No, so ZDNet doesn't work in either one. I personally like the full QWERTY, and if I'm going to use a See, it bounces automatically into landscape mode into the full QWERTY. Bounce back into portrait, you have the option between this, or as I showed, bouncing back in here, touch input. I'll show you the phone keypad one more time since I did not show what happens in landscape. Again, bounce into landscape mode, or landscape orientation, bounces to a full keyboard. So those are your text input options that uh, are currently available. You can also get some third-party keyboards from within the Android market, I understand. Um, I personally, uh, this one you cannot use uh, from what I've found so far, but I believe you can load it with the default Android keyboard. I personally like the HTC keyboard myself because I like the press and hold on, um, on the alternate keys, whereas the other ones you have to actually go shift or to the other screen to get some of those alternate keys, and with the HTC keyboard you do not. So that's a look at some of the touch um, input methods on the HTC Evo 4G. Thanks for watching.